so I wanted to show you the basic steps in removing iron staining from your minerals. Now you're out in the field and you find some that uh, don't really look that attractive, but once you get them home and clean them up, they're, they, they drastically change. So um, I have a few samples here in front of me that um, we'll go through and, and we'll see the before and after difference. So um, it could be anything, it could be calcite, fluorite, fossils, um, anything is pretty much safe with this method. So the ones that I'm going to be doing today is um, this one, I believe this is calcite. Um, you can tell by the growth there. So hopefully this will come up nice and bright white. Um, there's some gem tremolite that's in here. I don't know if you can see that on there. There's uh, some right there and it's scattered all through it. So I want to make sure that uh, I can get this nice and clean and just to more or less see what's in this rock. Um, I'm not too sure if it's going to be any good or not, but we'll, we'll definitely clean it and see what we have. The second one here is uh, it's a fossil that I found. Um, it's heavily iron stained. Again, I don't know how well this will come up, but uh, I thought I'd definitely try. It's it's pretty unique. We have here some purple fluoride on white calcite. Um, it's going to be white calcite. It's a little bit dirty right now, so hopefully that'll come up nice. And then I've got a few specimens that I'm going to be working on to see if I can bring them up. And there's just a tiny bit of staining on these ones here. Um, this one has some uh, pyrite in it. That's uh, got some iron staining around. I'm hoping that will uh, come up nice and good. So here's the setup I'm going to work with today. I'm doing two separate batches just because I don't want to contaminate the specimens on the right there. Um, the other ones are pretty heavily iron stained so I want to kind of keep them separate. Um, this is a super iron out. This is the stuff we'll be using and you definitely don't want to use iron out. You want to use super iron out. There is a difference. Um, and this is powdered form. You want to use that as well. So again we're going to use um, distilled water. Uh, if you do have um, uh, water purifier you could try that but I always work with distilled water to make sure that there's no contaminants on it so Make sure you have enough water to cover your specimens. This is a quarter cup measuring that I always use. Um, I just fill it up roughly about there. It's a pretty strong. There's not as much water in the second one, so I won't fill it up quite as much. Now there are some tips in doing this process. Uh, as I mentioned before, using distilled water. Now if you did have a filtration system where your water was filtered, you could try that again on a small piece, but um, I disregarded that step when I first tried this and I found that the calcium in the water and the other contaminants actually made a, a white milky coating on my specimen, so that didn't work out so well. Um, the second is, is that uh, some people will heat this solution up. Now, if you leave it in the sun, that's that's typically what I do. Um, some will use a, a slow cooker, a, a ceramic slow cooker, and turn it on low. Um, this whole process can take anywhere from three hours to a couple of days. So we'll, uh, we'll check back in a couple hours and we'll see what we have. So here we are the next day. I didn't stop and film it uh, part way through after a couple hours just simply because there wasn't enough change. Now there is quite a bit of change the next day and I'm happy with a few of the results. 
Turns out this was calcite, and there's some other interesting minerals all through this. And I'm going to give you a close-up more of that here in a second. There's that tremolite there. So. So this fossil didn't come out as well as I hoped. Uh, you could possibly leave it in a little bit longer. What I might even try is, is a bit of soda blasting on this. And I have another video uh, that I'm going to be doing a little bit later on on that process. So possibly stay tuned. Maybe I'll try that one. Uh, the fluoride, again, I think it's just a bit dirty instead of uh, iron stained. The uh, specimens came out pretty good. This looks like dirt instead of um, iron stained, so I'll have to clean that a little bit more. Uh, the pyrite here, as you can see, I don't know how well. Try and get a close-up of there. Still a little bit of rust staining around it. I could maybe soak that a little bit longer. So I just wanted to point out a few quick last things. If you did want more rust to come off or more iron staining on, uh, say for example, the fossil here, um, what you can do is just leave it in a little bit longer. I did this for probably about 24 hours and you can do it obviously for a lot longer than that. Um, I would change it maybe after a day, I'd change it to a fresh solution. Uh, maybe do it by itself uh, if, it's, if it's with some other stuff there. Um, the calcite on this uh, came up pretty good. Um, the calcite on, on the floor right here didn't come up very well at all, so I'm starting to think that maybe it's it's a little bit dirty instead of iron stained. So again, what you can maybe use is a uh, uh, electric dental brush, electric toothbrush with um, some denture cleaner. Uh, that might work as well. Um, now, I have read online that some people have had luck with uh, pyrite where it might uh, come out good and it might not, just depending on the pyrite itself. So uh, just make sure that you always, always, always test a sample that's that's not a specimen quality, just something that, that is uh, just almost a throwaway in a sense. Um, so yeah, that's basically the process and thanks for watching.